Hi, so to make your stickers, you're going to use some designing software or you can use an image you already have or whatever. I'm currently using Procreate and pulling up some images I drew a little bit earlier. So I'm just making sure all these images have a white background just to make it a little bit easier on me. I'm going to export it as a PNG with a transparent background. So when I go to upload it into Design Space, it works out perfectly. This is Cricut Design Space. I'm going to start a new project and go to upload. I know it's a little bit hard to see, so sorry about that. So I'm gonna select an image, and then I'm going to pull up the image from my computer. After I've selected it, it's going to take a little bit to load because it's such a large file size. I always try and use a larger file size just so it has the most details. At this screen, you're going to hit complex or whatever the highest resolution image is. If you hit simple, you'll lose a lot of details in your images, and it just won't look as neat. Here you can erase backgrounds. Because I created this design myself in Procreate, I don't have extra backgrounds to erase. But if you did, you can just use the selection tool and select the areas you want to erase. I do that here with the toilet paper sticker. It's kind of hard to see, but I just do it to demonstrate. I then undo it just because I don't actually want to get rid of it. I want to keep that border. I always keep borders on my stickers just so I don't have the Cricut cutting through my sticker. It gives me a lot more room for error especially because I am using that trick with the tape. It's not always perfectly accurate. So this next step is showing you the print then cut versus cut. I always check this to make sure there aren't any lines in the middle of my design because if there are on that right side, it will cut through your sticker. Sometimes if I accidentally leave a little bit of transparent area on my sticker when I'm designing it, it'll have like weird cut marks. I always just want to add some background to that. Just make sure that it doesn't cut in the middle of your sticker. I've had that happen too many times because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so I'm going to select print then cut and then go on to the next step. Sometimes it takes a while to load just because of the file size. It'll then bring you back to the screen and you're going to once again select your design from the bottom where your saved images are. It'll upload it into design space and you'll be able to edit the size and positioning. It will take a while to load into the area because again, with large file sizes, it always takes a while. On the right hand side, when you upload a large image, it'll show a little like caution sign. That's because the file size is too large and it can actually cut full size, like full page images. The maximum size it can cut is 9.25 inches by 6.75. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the image as close to that size as possible. On the right hand side of your image and on the top, it'll show the dimensions. And so I'm watching those right now to make sure I get it as close to that as possible without going over. Normally that means it's about 6.7 by 9.21. It's just as close as I can get it. I just want to make sure that it, I'm maximizing my space so I'm not losing out on any of that paper because it's expensive as most of us know. And unless you are a millionaire, sometimes you want to save space. <laughs> so when I get it as close to that size as possible, the little caution sign should be gone and you're going to be able to hit make it. When you hit make it, it will load into the screen and sometimes your design doesn't show up at first, but it'll always show up within a second or two. Um, you're just gonna wanna check, make sure everything's correct and I'll show you the mat layout, which you always wanna pay attention to just so when you're putting it on your Cricut mat, you don't put it on wrong. So you're going to hit send to printer and then I always check off add bleed and use printer dialog. That way I can control the settings a lot more carefully and adding the bleed makes sure that it doesn't cut over your image. It leaves a little bit of space around it. Okay, when your printer dialog pops up, you're gonna wanna hit printer preferences and select paper and I always do semi-gloss which is the photo paper. It just helps to make sure that your printer grips the paper because sometimes for whatever reason the printable vinyl likes to slip. So here is my finished paper. Um, it's actually not finished but it's printed. You can stop at this step and just cut it like that. However, I like to use these Scotch single-sided laminating sheets to make it glossy because I think it gives it a much more um, high quality feel. It's a little bit thicker, so you have that like texture that's nice with a, like an expensive sticker feel. Um, and these are super easy to apply. They make it so your image doesn't scratch. 
and it just looks a whole lot nicer. I'm turning this around so you guys can see it. But these sheets are super easy to apply. You just take off the top piece, lay it down, and you roll back the paper, um, smoothing it out as you go, just to make sure there are no air bubbles. However, these laminating sheets hardly ever get air bubbles. They're really good about it. Um, I think it's just they're so thick that for whatever reason, they don't do that. But I've never had an issue with it. Um, sometimes I have gotten some dust down there, but just make sure that your area is clean before you're doing it. So now I have this paper all nice and shiny. Um, I actually leave this border on it because it helps the paper stick to the mat. My Cricut mat's getting a little dusty and I need to clean it off, so this helps it stick for now. So with the glossy paper, um, there's this issue of the Cricut not always reading it correctly. Sometimes it scans the black lines and it doesn't recognize them because the light is reflecting off of it. So I have a trick I'll show you in just a second. However, I'm going to lay the paper out on the mat first the same direction it showed in the preview image. Um, you're going to want to make sure it's facing the right way, otherwise it will cut incorrectly and you don't want that. So my trick for dealing with the glossy paper is to cut little strips of tape. So first I'm going to lay the tape out on my self-healing mat. Um, I'm just going to want to line it up on like as close to the inch line as possible. It just helps me cut even lines. Um, and I find the little tick marks on the sides super helpful. If you don't have one of these mats, I'm sure you can do it by hand. I just am clumsy and not super accurate, so this helps me a lot. I have to say this is a lot easier when there's not a tripod sitting beside you, um, but you just wanna try and make sure that your lines are super even, as even as you can possibly make them, and as close to the size of that black line that's printed on the paper as possible because you're essentially going to be replacing those black lines, which is the only way your Cricut knows how to cut your image. I find that every little tick mark in my mat is pretty close to the size of that black line. It helps me a lot when cutting it out to make sure that each line is as close to the correct width as possible, which makes reading it a lot more accurate. Here I actually messed up a little bit. Again, having a tripod doesn't make it easy. Um, so I ended up having to scrap that sac second line just because it wasn't as even as I wanted it to be. So when you have your lines cut, you're going to position them over those black lines. They need to be as close to exact as possible. Even if that means replacing it a bunch of times, make sure that it is just really close to that original black line and just lined up as perfectly as possible. Otherwise you may get some errors in your cut and I can show you what ha happens like when it does that at the end. Here I actually had an issue because I tore off that piece a little too short. Um, I had to reposition it a bunch of times, ended up adding another extra little piece on the edge. However, that did cause some problems in my print. Um, just try and make it one consecutive piece. And as you can see, because of how close I placed it to the line, you can't actually tell that's there for the most part, except for it going past it on the end and being blue instead of black. Um, if you have striping tape, that is a million times better. A lot of people have it for nails and stuff. I just don't because, as you've probably been able to tell by this point, my nails are a mess. <laughs> and I normally don't even paint them. So, I'm going to continue and do that for the other two sides, and then I'm going to select the material on my computer. So, for Kiss Cut stickers, the ones where you can peel them off the sheet, I select the clear sticker paper. It's actually a little bit more intense than I wish it was, but it works really well for me, so I leave it like that. If I want fully cut out stickers, I normally select um, photo paper. So here, you can see that I messed up on that corner. I didn't think it would be an issue. It kind of was, not too bad though, so I'm just loading it into my machine and then pressing the go button. So now it's going to cut out the image. This is sped up a little bit. Um, make sure that it's not hitting the wall. I did that. It probably also contributed to it messing up a little bit, but hey, whatever, it worked. Pretty much. <laughs> um, so this is the machine reading those marks. If you just have the glossy paper without the tape over it, a lot of times it won't be able to read those, and so you'll get an error message on your computer. It's not fun. Especially if you don't know this trick, you end up wasting paper. I did that multiple times before I realized that I could just add the tape. <laughs> so it's going to cut out each of these sheets. Um, I did the kiss cut 
option, so it's just going to cut the first two layers, the um, sticker paper and the vine, or the um, laminate sheet. It's not going to cut the backing, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, it's actually cutting over the sticker just a tiny, tiny bit, which is because I messed up on those lines. So just make sure they're as close to perfect as possible. I know no one's perfect, but the Cricut thinks you are, so it does what it wants. I do have to say it's a little upsetting that you can't use the full paper. Um, this 6.75 by 9.25 is pretty close to the whole paper, but that black line on the edge just messed it up. So I'm unloading it now, and you can see that it cut pretty well. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when it's all together like that, but I forgot to add cut lines for my actual sheets. That's okay though, because if I had have added them, it would have cut the first couple layers only anyway. So I'm just using an X-Acto knife to cut these out. Um, you'll see in a little bit, my X-Acto knife is old. It does not like me, um, <laughs> but for now I can kind of just like cut out the lines you know, cut out the sheets like you do. Um, sorry I'm in the way of the camera a little bit. Working with a tripod is not my favorite thing and this is the first tutorial I filmed, haven't quite figured it out. So as I'm cutting each sheet, I really should have done six of the same size sheet. However, I did four of the same like sheet thing and then I did three individual stickers. So I can't just cut all the way across. I am cutting out the, um, like multiple sticker sheets first because they're a lot easier to cut out um, and then I end up cutting out the three in the middle at the end. So this is the point where I realized the blade of my X-Acto knife has fallen out and is somewhere on the floor and I'm going to have to deal with that and I can't find it. Um, <laughs> use tools that aren't broken guys. I highly recommend it. Don't recommend searching on the floor for an exacto knife blade. You'll probably find it eventually, but it's possible that you will have cut your foot before you do. Luckily I didn't. Very glad about that. This is me fiddling trying to get it back together for way too long. I am clumsy, not very skilled. I... <laughs> this is the wrong way to do this, guys. You'll be able to see that in a second when it doesn't screw in. I don't know. I'm very new to this. Probably just as new as you guys. I just... Wow. My exacto knife is also burnt because I tried cutting a plastic bag with it um, by heating it up. Thought it would seal the bag. That tutorial does not work, guys. I've watched the 5 Minute Crafts video 40 times and it does not work. So here I actually figure out how to cut it out. Finish doing it. Um, and yeah. This is where I realized I should have been speeding this video up from the beginning. I should have filmed it in time lapse, um, but I didn't. So as I finish cutting these out, I am going to hand check each and every one. Make sure that they are fully cut out. Um, you can't really do anything if they're not. However, I like checking just to make sure. Um, you can see any mistakes that were made. Hopefully fix them for the future. You can add more border. Um, make sure your lines are thinner. Um, as I do these, you can see on the back they did cut through a little bit. However, it's not cut through all the way, so they're mostly okay. Um, you can kind of see on the edges of these letters um, especially this H, that it cut very close to the letters. Um, it's not the worst, however, it could have been a lot better. I gave it a lot of border, it should have not done that. Um, they peel up like that, but it does bug me a little bit that they, um, they didn't get cut perfectly. That's again because I messed up with that tape. Um, I also messed up cutting this on the right, which is why it looks a little weird. Cut off the top layers on accident without cutting through all the way. <laughs> so this is me just testing out one of the stickers, this cute little toilet paper. Peel it off and place it. And you're all done. <laughs>